Hey, seasoned athletes, I'm Robin Leggett, and this is episode 64 of the Seasoned Athlete Podcast. Seasoned Athlete is your home for inspiring stories and motivational advice from competitive athletes representing a wide variety of sports who all share one common bond. They are all over 40 years old. We're here to prove one story at a time that age does not have to prevent you from achieving your bold athletic and fitness goals. If you like what you hear, I would love it if you'd subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And if you really love us, you can support our ability to bring inspirational stories to you by way of either a one-time donation or by becoming a monthly sponsor. Just go to seasonedathlete.me and click on one of the support seasoned athlete buttons to help support this DIY independent podcast. Today, I am sharing the first of my interviews from the Spartan World Media Fest brought to you by ATP Science. The Spartan World Media Fest took place during the recent Spartan World Championships weekend in Lake Tahoe. At this event, I had the opportunity to meet, connect with, and interview some truly inspirational people from the worlds of trail running, ultra endurance running, obstacle racing, and adventure racing. I am so excited to share these stories with you in future episodes. Today, I'll be starting with Terry Chiplin. Terry is a runner and running coach who currently leads one of the top adult running camps in the United States, where the average runner is usually over 45 years old. He claims that running saved his life in his late 20s, and he talks about that in our interview. He is the visionary behind the positive running movement, Active Acuity, a guided imagery app for athletes, and Positive Mindset Race Programs, which helps runners focus on their many positives in preparation for upcoming races. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting Terry, and on a personal level, I felt his support as I was getting ready to run my own race in Lake Tahoe. And I think his points about keeping a positive mindset really sank in during my race. Hopefully, it'll help you too. Here is Terry Chiplin. I am at Spartan Media Fest brought to you by ATP Science, and I am here right now with Terry Chiplin. Terry, thank you for being on the Season Athlete Podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. This is your first podcast of the day, you just told me? It's my first podcast of the day. We, uh, myself and my colleague, uh, Peter Maximo, we just landed uh, this afternoon, drove here, and here I am now. Here you are, ready to party. <laughs> crazy weekend ahead. We got some crazy weather coming. I, I think, know. Uh, where, did, uh, where did you come from? From uh, Estes Park in Colorado. Okay, um, so you're bringing us that weather. Thanks. Uh, yes. Actually, uh, <laughs> I left sunshine at home, and uh, snow is coming here. Yeah, yeah, you just brought it with you, I with did. the plane. So, uh, <laughs> Terry, you are an endurance runner, correct? correct. All right. Um, let's dig into your history. Oh, actually, but first, before we dig into your history, I'm going to ask you the question I ask all my guests on the show, and that is, what is your age at this moment in time? Oh, oh. I okay. know. We, Do I have to produce birth certificate or a passport? I'm going to take your word for it, okay. unless I don't believe what you say. <laughs> I'm 16. I'm 16. No, no, no. Uh, I'm 65. 65. Fantastic. We own our age here on this show because we're all about being, you know, badass at any age. And I can tell that about you. So um, (laughs) tell me a little bit about uh, what you're known for in regards to in the running world. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> um, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I haven't thought about it in a while. I'm, <laughs> uh, I think, I think there's several things. So in the, you mentioned, uh, um, the running camps that we do. Yeah. So, um, so we talked about that off the, off mic. Off, so go ahead and tell air. us about yeah, the running camps. Yeah. So, so we've been holding running camps in Estes Park in Colorado since 2007 was our first camp. Wow. Okay. Um, and, uh, we've grown a reputation for, um, for creating an environment where, um, athletes, especially women, um, can come and, uh, really flourish. Um, find we we tend to get a lot of athletes um, that come to us who have kind of lost their mojo um, have lost their spark for running have lost their joy of running and we do (laughs) from the experience we have with the runners that come um, then we we think we do a really good job of reconnecting people with their joy of running um, and that's so. So that's one one big thing for sure. Um, the the other thing that I do is I work a lot. Um, uh, I do endurance coaching, um, but I also work a lot with athletes. So I'm, I'm what what I call a positive running coach. We like that. So I I work with athletes to help them focus on the many positive things that they have about themselves as an athlete. 
Um, and that's not always easy right. um, because we can often be our own worst enemies. Um, we can often be judgmental, um, uh, self-deprecating, um, you know, all of these kind of negative things. Uh, and so I help athletes undo uh, whatever kind of negative thinking patterns they have and replace them with positive thinking. Um, and we find that has, a, strangely enough, a, a pretty amazing effect on their experience and their performance. I mean, mindset is huge when it mindset comes to, is huge. Yeah. to running into just being being an athlete in general. Absolutely. So if you can unlock the things that are holding them back in their minds and, and shift it to a positive place, that's a game changer. Absolutely. And so, yeah, we've had uh, we've had athletes that have literally, you know, turned their lives around as a result of coming to our camps. Um, and, you know, I mean, to, to give you one example, we, we had uh, we had one woman who came to us and she, um, as a result of coming through one of our experiences, then uh, she went back home, divorced her husband. Um, I mean, that <laughs> decided, happens. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Um, decided to uh, uh, to start living, um, uh, living life uh, in a positive way, um, decided to become active, changed her nutrition, um, complete lifestyle change, gained in confidence changed her job, um, met a new man, fell in love, got married. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's just amazing what, you, what people can do when you give them a glimpse of what's inside of them. Yeah, what they can become. What can they become, yeah. exactly, exactly. So um, um, tell me about your own running history. So uh, ooh, okay. how far back do we go on that? <laughs> well, it's funny you should mention that. I, I, I sometimes say that I think I could run before I could walk. <laughs> Um, and my parents, God bless them, that they're they're both passed away now, so they can't argue with me on that. Yeah, so that's um, that so, stands. So that's it. Um, the I I just remember um, uh, I remember being at school. I mean, this is back in England now. So um, and yeah, hopefully the accent you can still hear. I but think I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not a, not a traditional Colorado accent that I know. Not of. quite. <laughs> The mountain air has got to me. It's got to you. Yeah, you're, yeah. Already, you're already giddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And um, yeah, I had. Uh, um, I used to be at elementary school back in England, um, so it was primary school for me back then. And and I used to literally sit in class and dream about running. Wow. Um, I used to write stories about running, and um, my my goal was to become an Olympic world champion. You know, Olympic champion. Um, and I was running, um, you know, as you do at school, I was running uh, um, kind of 50, 50 yards, 80 yards or something on grass, short distances. Um, and then when I went to senior school, I changed to kind of hundreds and two twenties, but we ran on cinders in those days. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> really good and, for the feet. And big long spikes, it was like yeah, three yeah. quarter inch long spikes. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I, I won every race that I won, every race that I ran, I won up until the age of about 15. Um, and and then all of a sudden, these guys that I was racing up against started growing these bigger muscles, <laughs> and and mine kind of grew. I grew in size and you know got stronger, but um, but I didn't have the same power as the guys I was running up against. And instead of winning, I was coming like second, third, fourth. That was a new experience for you. And it was a new experience, and my world fell apart. <laughs> it literally did. It literally did. It, it, it was um, uh, you know nobody back then. You know, it's like my coaches at school would 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 say, you know, just run harder. Right. You know, and, and it was like that was their <laughs> That was their signature coaching style. Exactly. The one thing, exactly. Just run harder. As as they sat there smoking a cigarette, of you course, know, it's like run harder. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I kind of um, uh, always enjoyed running. I, I loved the the feeling barefoot running on grass because mm -hmm. um, that's how I grew up. Um, and and then I left school and I discovered sex and drugs and rock and roll. There we go. And yeah, yeah. Anybody <laughs> been there? There's always that point where you get derailed. <laughs> sometimes it's people get married and have kids and yes. sometimes it's sex, drugs and rock and roll. I've talked to all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, go on. And I had 10 years when I went off the rails. Um, and, uh, um, and then I remember waking up one day, um, 28 years old, and, um, and I just kind of thought to myself, you're not going to have a long life. If you continue doing what you're, gonna, what you're doing, then you're not going to have a long, healthy life. I mean, I felt like shit. Mm. Um, I don't know if I can say that. Sorry, on the podcast, but okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a bleeper you can put in here? I, yeah. no, they, no. We're, not, we're not governed by the FCC. Okay, but, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, yeah, I, I just 
felt absolutely crap about myself. I had bad health. I had chronic breathing issues, bad skin, um, self-esteem down the drain. It was it was really in a bad place. Um, and and there, I I just remember waking up one morning and thinking, you know, that that's that you can't carry on doing what you're doing. So I was like, what did I used to enjoy doing that I'm not doing anymore? And the first thought that came into my head was running. So I put put some trainers on, went out the door, um, and I I just ran some, walked some, ran some, walked some, got back home, blisters on my feet, um, and I was like, I remember, <laughs> I remember, this is what it feels like, you know, it's it's like that that runner's high, the endorphin rush, you know, all of all of those things, and and I I call myself a born again runner. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, and and so I've been endurance running and 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 coaching later on um, since 28 years old. So it's now been 37 years. And you're still racing. And I'm still racing. I mean, I'm not. I don't consider myself really kind of competitive anymore um, because I'm I'm running more for the joy of running rather than how fast I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, I I do like running fast at times. You probably um, naturally run fast anyway. You know. Mm, I, I've still <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to try and talk Here myself and out of it, but yeah, I run fast. Give, give me a downhill stretch and I can keep up with a lot of people. There you yeah, go. Yeah. There you go. So it's interesting because mm. you, you had to reconnect with the, re- you got to reconnect with your why basically Yes. to get back into it. And that's what you've been doing to help people. People. So do you think Absolutely. because you helped yourself mm. that gave you the tools to then help others? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it, it's one of those situations that, you know, one, once you, um, once you've experienced it yourself, then you know that it's possible for other people too. Yeah. And so that makes a big difference. And, and you know, it, it's, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm pretty genuine. Um, and, you know, so, I mean, one, one thing that happens at our camps, for example, is, um, is we often end up with our runners in tears mm-hmm. um, because they get to realize you know, hey, I've been. I'm just talking to to Andy um, mm-hmm. before before I came in for this podcast. Yeah. Um, so she's one of the one of the people helping set up the media fest and yeah, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, she and I go way back. You <laughs> do? I know oh, her. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I've so so she was telling me, you know, that she missed out on 20 years of her life um, not running. You know, because somebody said to her, you know, you won't be able to run. Um, and and it's like, you know, when, when you put people in that situation where um, uh, where they realize what they've been missing, um, then tears just flow. You know, it, it, it's like once we realize what we've been giving yeah. up or yeah. not, not, not Years achieving. of your life that yeah, yeah. you and, might have and, wasted. And, you know, it, it's it's so exciting for me to um, to have somebody arrive with, with us for a camp and, and you can see they have potential. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, everybody can see they have potential. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's not just me, but um, everybody else in the camp as well. And then and then to see, you know, we, we work, our longest camp is seven, seven days, six mm-hmm. nights and seven days. So this is one week that we're talking about this where is Week. transformations happen yeah yeah but it but it's amazing what can happen in just a, um, a short period of time when you're actually focused and that's the other thing you know we, we 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 immerse people in running and themselves and connecting with themselves yeah and so they're so going deep on a physical going, level and an emotional level absolutely yeah absolutely um, and we do, yeah, like I mentioned, we do a lot of work um, uh, as well with mindset, mm-hmm. um, you know, and as you said, that is, you know, everything. I mean, it's interesting that uh, there's a, um, a movie I really like, Unbreakable, um, mm-hmm. um, about the 2010 Western States, yeah, um, which is kind of poetic in a way because we're we're here in Squaw Valley and <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah, where where Western State starts yeah um, and uh, but Killian Jornet was uh, um, in that movie was saying you know it's like f- running is fifty percent mental fifty percent physical and and I'm like no no it's it's a hundred percent mental yeah a hundred percent physical it's <laughs> like you know it's, <laughs> it's a different kind of math it's a different kind of math yeah. yes yes I mean it doesn't add up to a hundred percent but um, you know it's uh, um, yeah I mean you you I mean I've I've certainly you know if if when I think back to when I was a younger runner then it was like I had potential but it's like I just didn't have the confidence in myself to really believe what I could achieve Um, and I think that's another part of why it's important for me to work with athletes now um, and help them achieve their potential yeah Um, because we're we all are capable of far more 
than we even know. That is that's a that's like a common um, yes. trend in this podcast <laughs> about being capable of more than you know. Because good generally when you reach an older age, a lot of people when they reach you know forties or fifties, and oh. if they haven't been active, yeah. they haven't they mm. don't think that it's possible for them. Yeah, and there's mm. there's always a place to start. You know, right. we can all start somewhere. It sounds like that's mm. that's what you do. That's yes. what you're all about. So what? Yeah. What types of people are drawn to your camp? Like, if you're making these massive transformations in a week, mm-hmm. where are they at currently that they see your camp and think, I should go to this? Wow. Um, we have a lot of variety on that. So, um, I, in just this year, for example, we had, uh, um, to give you an example, we had, we had one woman, we, we do three levels of women's camps. We do a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And that's based on um, kind of pace range um, and kind of endurance in terms of how long you can run for it. Um, And one of the women that came to our advanced camp um, had been struggling for several years with injuries. And she she found the information on the camp, and and I remember her saying that she was like, you know, I, I just I just felt drawn to this camp. It it just seems like this is going to be the perfect fit for me. Um, and within a couple of days, where we're talking about uh, um, how to how to put a training program together. Um, so that it's sustainable, mm-hmm. as in, as in, we want you to keep running for years, mm-hmm. not not to break down and then have to recover and then come back again, and and effectively end up staying pretty much where you were. Um, and and she had like all of a sudden she had this epiphany, and and she was like, ah, oh, that's why I keep getting injured. <laughs> we just shared this one piece with her, um, and and it was like. Oh my God! But the beauty of this particular moment is that we—I think what we what we have discovered is that many many runners end up blaming themselves because they're not getting to the places that they want to get to. When um, really it might have been a lack of proper information. Exactly. Like one piece of exactly. information that could have changed it for them that they just didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, so so that's a, that's one really good example. Um, I'm. Uh, other examples are maybe women that are uh, maybe interested in trail running, but are kind of been scared about getting into it mm-hmm. um, for different reasons. Um, and so coming to a camp where they're going, they, they, they know that they're going to be running in a group um, where we guide them, so they haven't got to be worried about how they get there and get back. Um, so we do all of that for them, but then we also house them, we feed them, <laughs> we transport them. <laughs> right. Um, we we you know, Take it, you're the removing <laughs> the barriers basically, all the barriers. Yeah. That would stop them from mm. doing this in the first place. You're removing that, so they have no reason not to. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And then I haven't, I haven't checked the data, um, but I suspect that our average age um, for the camps this year for the women um, has been, I would say, low fifties. Interesting. Yeah. Is that mm. deliberate, or is that just who is drawn? That's to who's it? drawn. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, we've we've literally had um, over the years we've been running the camps. Now we've the youngest athlete we've had has been twenty one, mm-hmm. and we've had several women in their seventies come to our camps. Amazing. And they've Love been it. they've been fantastic. Um, you know that it, it's just so inspiring. Yeah. Um, you know to to have a, a woman in her seventies come, and it's been really interesting because we haven't had men in their seventies. And we do co-educational camps mm-hmm. as well, um, which are trail running focused. And you know we've had uh, um, we've had some men attend those. But he, I mean the last the last trail camp we did in September was actually all women as well, um, even though it's open to men. Interesting. <laughs> Why do you think that is? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I I think I. <laughs> We actually, well, to give you an example, we had one camp that was a co-ed camp, which was actually all men. And it was so different from the camp, from the camps that have been all women. So it was almost like the men tolerated each other <laughs> and would talk with each other and run with each other, but they didn't connect. Mm-hmm. They didn't socialize. And, and th- but then what happens, you get a group of women together and within two or three days, they are organizing a race later in the year for everybody else to meet <laughs> up and go and socialize again, you know, and it's, and it's just amazing. And, you know, so it, it's so, um, so inspiring for, for me and my wife, you know, we, we create the, the camps, we set up the dates, you know, we put the information out there. Um, and then we kind of sit back and it's like, we don't know who we're going to get, but we get some amazing, 
women especially mm-hmm. um, and yeah we're just so blessed and thankful to um, and grateful to to be in that position and uh, how long have you been doing these camps? So 2007 was the first camp. Right. We, we did seven camps this year. Um, so, yeah. Has it been growing year <laughs> yes. to year? Yeah, it has. Oh, cool. It has. And, and, you know, this year we had uh, um, all our women's camps sold out. Um, we had waiting lists for all of those camps. Um, we had some runners cancel. Um, before the camps as well for different reasons, main, mainly injuries, unfortunately, um, and work situations and that kind of thing. Um, and so we then used our waiting list to bring people in and say, hey, we've got a space opened up for you. And it's like, what? Yeah, Yay, you can come to camp. <laughs> um, so, yeah, six, six or seven camps sold out. Um, and, you know, they're, they're not big camps in the terms of numbers. We'd rather keep the numbers small and keep them more intimate, more mm-hmm. personal. Um, and... That, yeah, we found that works really well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we house everybody in a, um, uh, in a, in a home, um, in a lodge in Estes Park in mm-hmm. Colorado, mountain views. Um, we have elk and deer come and visit, hummingbirds and raccoons. And My eyes are getting big, like, I yeah. want to go to this camp now. <laughs> like, I, this sounds amazing. You've got to come. I just love it because it's like, <laughs> it's summer camp, but... It's, but you're not staying in a, like a cabin. You're staying in a nice house because yes. we're adults yes. And, yes. and we're grown people. And you're and you're helping women, particularly women who are older, like yeah. do mm-hmm. this amazing thing. It's, it, and you get to step away from your responsibilities for a week and absolutely and find absolutely. a more awesome side of yourself. Like <laughs> I love everything about this, and I just think it's so interesting. Uh, you know, on this podcast, I've been doing this podcast for over two years. I've interviewed yeah. a lot of runners, right. and many runners, many women runners in their 50s, 60s, 70s. And it's interesting because you reach that point in your life where your kids are grown and you're able to sort of, you have a little bit more time and you're able to tap into this thing that, you know, they might be triathletes or road runners or trail runners or whatever the case, or Spartan athletes, Mm. as it would stand. Um, But, (laughs) you know, it's like there's, you just reach that moment in your life where you're like, I have a little bit of freedom for myself. Yes. And then mm. and then they're coming to you with a, probably mm. a fair amount of baggage yes. that they have <laughs> collected over the years before they finally decided that this is a thing mm. that they want to pursue yeah. and you help them sort of work mm. through yeah. all that baggage so that they can achieve their potential. Yeah. Yeah. It it was I mean t- you raised a really good point as well, Robin. There, um, and to give you another example from a camp this year, um, we had uh, we had one woman come, and uh, um, she she was in tears at one point um, during the camp, and uh, um, so we're like, you know, what, what what's happening? Why are you crying? And she was like, this is the longest time I've spent away from my kids um, since they were born. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're right it, it is there's a little guilt a little that, guilt yeah. a little guilt and but it but it's yeah i think it's so important you know for um especially for women because uh, um you know i think uh, i i think women can get trapped in in that guilt you know which mm-hmm. which men find kind of easier to kind of slide off the shoulders it sure seems like that's the case yeah. it does doesn't it <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah 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 we're getting some agreement from the table here right right yeah. <laughs> and I, you know i've talked to a, a variety of parents today and yeah, you get the common thread, at least among the people here, is like you find a way. Yeah. But so many don't. So many people uh, and women, I think, especially just it's like family first, everybody before me. Right. You know, even job before me, everything yeah. before me. Yeah. And um, you lose something in that. You know, you lose yeah. something. And then if you you either get to discover it later or you don't get to discover it at all, at which all. is really a shame. Yeah. So when really we should be working that in. All the, time. all the time because if you're if you're taking care of yourself you can take better care of other Ab- people absolutely yeah yeah and that that's so important yeah mm-hmm. and I and I and I kind of want to go back to your story about the woman who left and it was like I have to leave my husband and oh yeah, yeah. you know because I've I come from before I got into Spartan racing I played roller derby for a bunch of years and it was a very female dominated sport and something I noticed a lot during that time is people came in with relationships and then they found this empowering right. sport that helped them find mm-hmm. confidence. And if their partners weren't ready for that, yes. weren't ready for them to come back more confident, come home more confident, you know, yeah. it's very threatening to some people. It's like, 
you have to some that that may be a sign that you may need to step away because they're they're holding you down they're holding you back back exactly you know whereas instead you know if you could find a partner who actually supports you in that right it's so much more important mm-hmm. I got lucky but because I met my husband after I was playing roller derby so it was always <laughs> part of the deal. So. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> he said he would have left me well, otherwise. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think people don't realize that. I've seen this in the sport, the prior sport I played. I see this in relationships in the Spartan world that I'm in. Right. And it exists everywhere that when you can find your confidence yeah. in an athletic mm-hmm. endeavor or in any area of your life, but in, in athletics, it can it can have a ripple effect yes. in other areas of your life. And if the people in your life are not ready for that, right. that can be an issue. That can be an issue. Yeah. yeah. I, um, my, uh, <laughs> my wife, my wife and I worked together on the women's camps, especially, uh, and we actually met at a running club back in England. Well, that was fortuitous. It was fortuitous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, it was funny. I, I went to the running club. Um, uh, my first marriage had broken up and, uh, um, and I was, I was not, it's funny, I wasn't looking for a relationship. Mm-hmm. I'd actually That's decided. They yeah, they, it does happen <laughs> that way, doesn't mm-hmm. it? I, and I'd actually decided that I was going to have um, a, a year off without a relationship. I was going to give myself an opportunity to heal. Mm-hmm. Um, because being a typical guy, then it was like the way I dealt with breakups before was I just find somebody else the next day. Well, sure. You know? yeah. <laughs> or the same night. Uh-huh. Or, yeah. And, <laughs> and so it was like that's not going to continue you know that that's not a healthy way for me to continue um so um so a friend of mine at work said uh, said hey why don't you come to our running club and so i went along to the club and and i've been going a few times and then i was late um coming from work and the everybody in the group had, had already taken off um as i was arriving so i quickly got changed and and kind of ran off after them and as i was running kind of caught up with the with the back of the pack and uh, and as I was running through, there was this. Uh, um, I just looked up, and there was this pair of legs. <laughs> you looked up, and there was. I a looked pair of up, legs. and there was a pair of because yeah. it was a hill. Was okay, a hill. thank you, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I'm like, Those are some I, legs. I wasn't on my knees. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and then above the pair of legs was this butt, and then you know, and so on. Anyway, the <laughs> I get where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, but it was. I think it's been so. You know. We, we had no idea when we first met um, that we would actually end up, um, you know, this was 1991. Um, so gosh, what's that? 28 years ago now. And um, in England. And, you know, we, we didn't come to Colorado, start planning to come to Colorado until 2005. So, you know, we had no idea that we would end up working together, you know, as coaches on camps and, you know, that kind of thing. But it's like it's been so important for us to both be runners, mm-hmm. um, and you know our um, uh, some of the things that we that we like in terms of running are, are different, but so many things are, 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 are paralleled. Yeah. Um, and and we just work really well together. Um, you know, we make a good partnership. Not not only in um, in terms of coaching, but also in life as well. Well, um, it's when you find someone mm. like that, you hold on to that person. Yes. <laughs> yes. J- Jacqueline, you're a keeper. Yay, Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah, my husband and I run a gym together, so we understand. <laughs> yes. I understand. We understand <laughs> that situation. If you can find someone that you can work with and live with, you know, that's that you hold on to that. <laughs> you do. That that's so important. And and it doesn't come along every day. Um and that's the other thing. You know, it does not. No. no. <laughs> and so if it comes along and you said I'm gonna take a year off, but it's within that year, you just roll with it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, you're still active, you still run, um, yes. you still race, you said not competitively, but for fun and you can still, you can still hold up, you know, you still keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. what kind of challenges do you face as an athlete your age? Um, mm. still pushing yourself. Wow. Okay. Um, the, the, the biggest, the biggest challenge is to, uh, I find is to let go of my ego. Hmm. Um, so it's like, you know, there's, um, there's this part of me, um, that still wants to be, you know, the 18 year old, um, the brain is still 18, the brain is still 18, you know, and, and being able to run, um, 11, six for a hundred or 24 and change for two twenties, um, you know, to, to be able to do that. 
um, you know, would be fantastic. Um, um, you know, to be able to run, um, and I used to run um, in my 40s, I was running um, uh, kind of sub 60s. Um, uh, I'd run for, you know, five miles at 30 minutes and, and it was, it felt great. It felt mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, and so, you know, to realize that um, I still I still have, you know, compared to most of the population, um, I'm still faster than than most people my age. Sure. Um, but that, yeah. but that that speed, that pace is 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 behind me, um, at least consistently, you know, with a, with a tailwind and downhill that I can <laughs> still get pretty quick. Um, <laughs> but but the hard I think the hardest part of that is 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 recognizing that it takes longer for my body to recover yeah. now. Um, you know, so I, th I think th that's, that's possibly the hardest part. Um, and, you know, I've had, um, I also broke my femur um, in six years ago, 2013. Uh, and, and recognizing that, um, you know, it, it's like it's healed and I'm, I'm stronger and I'm running and, and everything's, you know, working really well. But, um, but there are also some, some other issues which I need to uh, just kind of pay respect for. Um, and so, you know, thinking of the bigger picture, I want to be running until I'm in my 90s. Yeah. You know? um, and so to, 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 in terms of my own running, um, then to, to think of it as, you know, every day is an opportunity that I've been given um, to go out and enjoy and love doing what I, what I love doing. Um, and running trails, you know, it's like I, I is is the best thing, you know, since sliced bread, <laughs> uh, as, as we say in England. But um, <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it's just, um, you know, the chance to to be physically active, but also connect with nature yes. um, is just such a gift. Um, and, you know, for, for, for Jacqueline and I to have landed in Colorado and, and you know, we, we, have, we have trails literally within a few hundred yards of our door. That's amazing. Um, is, is just amazing. Um, you know, and we can, we can run for miles and miles and miles. We can go up to 14,000 feet. Um, within a relatively short distance, we can we can drop down in elevation as well. Um, so we can go down to places like Boulder or Fort Collins or Lyons um, and drop two and a half thousand feet in elevation. Um, so you know we're we're just so so blessed. Yeah. Um, it's it's a an, an amazing you know for, and and to have it at this time in my life. Yes. As well, you know, it's like I think back to you know my parents at this age, at the age I am now. Um, you know, it's like they were just so inactive. Um, they both smoked, they both drank. Um, and I used to, I remember looking at them and thinking, I do not want to be like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so it, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, very, very thankful that uh, um, it's uh, life has given me the opportunities that I have and uh, um, that I'm still here to uh, to, yeah. Yeah, to to achieve them and bless them. And yeah. you're making the most of those mm. opportunities and you're living well and moving well in your 60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's just... Um, yeah, and for many more years to come. I for mean, that's, many that's, more years to come. That, that's my that's my vision, my intention. Well, yeah. and and when you set an intention, that's the best way to accomplish that goal. You start with that intention. It is mind mindset, one hundred percent. Yep. Physical, mental, one hundred percent. Physical, one hundred percent. Definitely. Um, Every, everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with a dream. Um. So <laughs> we talked about the challenges you face. What kind of benefits do you feel you're experiencing now that you're an older athlete? Oh wow. Um, Compared to maybe your younger counterparts. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think I'm much more focused on the experience now. Um, I, I used to be much more focused on, on the pace and speed. Yeah. Um, the, ex the experience, yeah, <laughs> I'm winning. Um, the, I mean, the experience is, is, is so important for me now. Um, and, you know, so, so it's, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the bit, my biggest takeaway um, in terms of being at this age now. Um, and then, and then being able to, um, you know, when I was, uh, um, when I was younger, then I, I didn't, I think I had this idea about maybe, maybe coaching others, but, but it wasn't, it wasn't really like it is now. Right. Um, you know, so it's like, I, it's funny, I can't, I mean, I'll, I'll be driving down the road and I'll pass a runner and it's like, I'll glance at them and, and I'll, and I can, I can see something about the way they're running. 
and it's like, okay, if I see them again, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm like, gonna you know, just mention this. You just want to pull over and pull be over. like, hey, <laughs> just, I just want to fix this one thing, and they're like, who are you, crazy person? <laughs> but the yes. temptation's always there. Yeah, and you're like, and yeah. I'm just trying to help. I just want to help you. <laughs> Do you, do you know you're leaning backwards? You know, it's like, uh, uh, what? Right? I'm just out for a run, man. <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to change your world right but, now. But let me show you what happens when you lean forwards. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You just yes. you just rock my world. <laughs> so what advice would you have for, you know, especially, I think this is a good question to ask you. I ask this of a lot of my guests, but because you actually do help people who are sure. over 40 and help women who are over 40. Yeah. Uh, improve their running or even just find a place for running in their lives. Right. What advice would you have for somebody who is a seasoned athlete uh, or not a seasoned athlete, but wants to be a seasoned athlete, but you know, maybe intimidated or maybe thinking like, but, but, but my family, but my job, but, but I don't have time, you know, coming up with the different excuses, right. um, whatever they come up with. And probably a lot of them come to you with this stuff. What advice do you have for people like that? Come to one of our camps. Come to one of your camps. <laughs> <laughs> I will, no, I will no. fix you. <laughs> I will show you the way. We, we will fix you. No, I, I think, um, I seriously then um, uh, get help. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's, um, um, and it, it's such a, um, we often struggle on our own. Yes. And, you know, this, this is true whether we're thinking about running or life. Um, that we often struggle on our own, and and it doesn't need to be that way, you know. There, um, uh, I've, I think if you, you know, if you can, it. I mean, coming to our camp is a great idea, um, but, but but we've also we've also encouraged women um, who are maybe um, uh, afraid of running on their own, mm-hmm. then find other women who are afraid of running on their own. Get connected with other women who are frightened of running on their own. Start a running group. Start your own running group. And, and, you know, if you, if, if you can't make it to, to somebody else, um, who can help you, then reach out to somebody who, uh, you know, and part of the beauty about, um, um, connecting with other people, um, is that you never know what kind of support you're going to get back. You know, and 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 sometimes it, it, it's, you know, what you said about creating intention, um, I think is really important. That that you need to, um, you know, if you do have a dream, if if you if you want to become a seasoned runner, um, then find a way to do it. You know, don't um, don't be trapped by fear. Um, don't be trapped by what you're afraid of. That is never going to happen probably anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're creating the scenario. You're creating in, the scenario. In your head, but yeah. Um, and, and, and move forward in a po- with a positive intention. Um, and so much magic happens when, when we open those doors of possibility. Um, you know, if we, if we stay in the places where we're stuck, um, then all we're going to know is the places that we're stuck. Um, and, you know, just to, yeah, I mean, to, to be... Y- I mean, I think so much can happen when we step outside of our comfort zone. Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, we can we can just, but then you know, to live a life, um, to live a life with regrets, I think is is a life that's potentially wasted. Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, if you if you have a um, an inkling that there's some something of a runner inside you that's not being met in some way, whatever way that that shape or form that is, um, then then find a way, find a way, focus and find a way to let it out. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. Yeah. 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 You know, I believe we were all put on this earth for a reason. Um, And, you know, if if you'd said to me um, 50 years ago, you know, that I would end up being a running coach, (laughs) for example, and uh, doing the things that I do, then I would have said, no way. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a racing car driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but my life is so much, full, so much more fulfilled because I made, I stepped outside of my comfort zone and, and made the decisions that I did towards um, something that I believed was. Uh, good for me and good for my soul, good for my heart. Yeah. Um, and running is is the mo- one of the most natural things we can do um, in terms of a you know a movement pattern, yes. physical activity. I mean, we were born um, we were born to do we it. We were born yeah. to run, as, yeah, as Cr- Chris McDougall said, <laughs> <laughs> and I believe him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I've been listening to Bruce Springsteen, so I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, actually, that that's a re- I mean that that song is uh, um, is a, an amazing song as well. But uh, but yeah, I, th- I believe we were born to run, and uh, um, and that song has some prophetic words as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that definitely, it, yeah, move forward with a positive intention and uh, um, believe in yourself because yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I like that. It's like you said, if you even have an inkling, you owe it to yourself to explore that wherever it takes you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Awesome. Um, so if people want to learn about your running camp, or learn about you, learn about your running camp, uh, maybe yes. they're interested, maybe they, they heard this and they're like, oh, I need to try this. Tell us how they can find out. Okay. So um, the website is active at altitude.com. Oh, A-C-T-I-V-E-A-T-A-L-T-I-T-U-D-E dot com. And, uh, um, yeah, that has all the information about the uh, the running camps that we do, um, both the uh, women's running camps and the co-ed running camps. It also has some information about uh, uh, our mindset programs. Um, it also has information about the uh, U.S. Trail Running Conference, which uh, I'm also the event director of, oh, well. um, which I hadn't mentioned up until oh, now. Like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about that. I kind of kept that in the background, um, which, uh, which happens every year. And this year is uh, happening in Estes Park, which is my hometown. That, um, October nice for the, you. Well, that makes it much easier. <laughs> yeah. um, October the 9th to the 12th. So that's um, coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up in two yeah, weeks. Yeah. And it's at the historic Stanley Hotel. And uh, um, if anybody's listening, then the uh, uh, the Active at Altitude website also has a link for the U.S. Trail Running Conference, too. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And that means I'm going to have to air this before then. So you might be one of the first Ooh. episodes that comes out. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I want to make sure the people hear that. Uh, Terry. Thank you so much. Actually, no. no. I'm not going to end it yet. Okay. I'm going to end with one more thing. Oh, please. I almost forgot. Um, <sighs> I always ask this. Yes. If you could leave our listeners with one parting piece of wisdom, oh. what would that be? I always put people on the spot with that. And go. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So <laughs> this actually fits in really well with um, what we were talking about, uh, um, the wisdom of uh, um, of age and, mm-hmm. and getting older. Um play play it's so important to play um, as adults we um, we lose touch with um, oh, with that child inside of us mm-hmm. um, that playful person um, that person who wants to whoop when they go running down a trail um, <laughs> that person yeah <laughs> we're all here we have not we're lost <laughs> that but a lot of people have <laughs> that that person that when when they see a um, uh, a downhill doesn't feel scared and just wants to let rip and run free yeah mm-hmm. um, uh, somebody who um, you know on trail sometimes they have switchbacks and mm-hmm. the, and the bends are banked yeah. yeah run the bend hard run the bend hard yeah. run the bank not easy just like roller the derby. run the bend hard yeah yeah <laughs> just like in roller derby <laughs> <laughs> yeah play i think it's so important you know again you know it, it's you know as human beings on this planet then you know we weren't here to be serious and fearful um, I believe we were here to enjoy ourselves, um, to be connected to each other, to nature, um, to uh, to find out what we're capable of, um, to explore our limits. And, and play is one of the ways we do that. Um, you know, and if we watch children or young animals, oh, they have they no do? fear. They have no fear. And they play. They play. They yeah. play. All they want to do is play. Mm-hmm. It's like my dog Coco at home. I mean, we, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we have two cats, so yeah, yeah. we see them play all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that—that's what life is about. Mm-hmm. Um, and and running, especially on trails, um, gives us a chance to play in a way that not many other things do. That's true. Yeah, I'm so glad I doubled back and asked that question. Of thank you. you I am too. Perfect way to wrap <laughs> things up, Terry. Thank you so much for yeah. being on the Season Athlete Podcast today. My pleasure, Romy. Good, good to be here. All right, Season Athletes. Here are my top three takeaways from Terry Chiplin. Number one, if you have fears or apprehensions about running, connect with others who may have similar fears. You can support each other, get to know each other, and most importantly, run together. You are not in this alone. Number two, running is 100% mental and 100% physical. The math may not add up in the traditional sense, but it's the real deal. Make sure you give full care and attention to both. And number three, be sure to make time for play in your life, just like when you were a kid and just like we see our pets do. 
As Terry says, we are here to enjoy ourselves and explore our limits. And play is a way to do just that. So hit the trails and play. Thanks again to Terry Chiplin. Learn about him, his trail running camps, and the upcoming U.S. Trail Running Conference at activeataltitude.com. Thank you for listening to the Seasoned Athlete Podcast. The music you heard in this episode is from someone who lives to play, Jason Achilles. Learn more about him at jasonachilles.com. Do you know someone who would make a great guest on the show? Or do you have a unique and inspirational story to share? Shoot us an email, seasonedathlete at gmail.com. Check out our entire library of episodes and learn about our distinguished seasoned athlete alumni at seasonedathlete.me. While you're there, click on the Support Seasoned Athlete button to help us continue to share stories of ageless athletes and their remarkable journeys. Now go out there and embrace your extraordinary, my fellow seasoned athletes, because you so can.